Ruchira Sharma finds out which are the developers who are launching some of the tallest projects in the country and are these a marketing gimmick to get noticed or really worth your money? If Japan, China, Dubai and Singapore can build some of the world's largest skyscrapers, why can't India? And when it comes to major metros, it almost becomes a necessity to expand upwards. Shortage of land makes high-rise structures a viable option for developers to derive the maximum economic benefit from a land parcel. And going by the recent slew of high-rise launches, it seems that the sky is truly the limit. These magnificent buildings range from 40 levels and go up to 100 levels. In the National Capital Region or the NCR, those vying to build the tallest structures include IREO, Raheja Developers and Supertech Limited. While the Loda Group is building the tallest residential tower, not just in Mumbai and the country, but in the world, with 117 floors. Urbana is out to prove how Kolkata will look different from the 45th floor. The trend is definitely here to stay. Uh, we have launched something which is the tallest building in, in Gurgaon and we are also launching the tallest building in Delhi. We are working uh, with the construction company that built the Burj Khalifa. So technology wise we do have the access and expertise to execute something that's so um, massive in its scale. High-rise living does have its advantages. Exclusivity, privacy, spectacular views and cleaner environment. But then there are also some major concerns. Skyscrapers are not always environmentally sustainable, being high-energy guzzlers. The question of safety also arises. In case of a fire or an earthquake, one is at a greater danger in vertical buildings, as opposed to a low-rise. So one needs to ask whether all developers are taking the necessary precautions and following regulations while building these architectural marvels. Definitely, it's a big concern that uh, buildings should be structurally safe and uh, f should be following our international norms of uh, vertical development. In terms of that, yes, we are we are following uh, world's best norms in terms of uh, structure designing and services designing and vertical movement de designing and everything. There is there is no expertise in India to ex execute these kind of projects. So what we are doing, we are bringing expertise from uh, outside India. Even though the builders are optimistic, home buyers need to be on their guard while choosing their builder. One needs to read the fine print while investing in a high rise. The carpet area versus super area discrepancy could be greater since some usable living spaces are utilized for common areas like lobbies and lifts. So one pays more yet ends up with less actual area. While the thought of living on the top of the world is appealing to most people, a noteworthy fact is that these properties usually come at a premium price since construction of skyscrapers involves substantially higher cost. So the question arises whether the end user should expect higher returns while investing in skyscrapers. Overall, I think the safety aspect is something which is going to be critical. So if the developers uh, are, are going to sort of, you know, take necessary steps to kind of articulate the safety aspects from a consumer's point of view, then I think the overall the package should be attractive. So the verdict is clear. Going vertical might be a solution for the soaring population and the mounting pressure on land, but it needs to be implemented carefully with the necessary regulations to be successful in the Indian context. In New Delhi, Ruchira Sharma for NDTV. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.